Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to cover the basics and setup of CVW Pro Z. This system is designed for the TV show film field. CVW Pro Z is a zero latency wireless video transmission system designed for the demanding cinema broadcast applications. It can transmit 1080p 60fps 422 video at up to 2,600 feet. It features channel scan in multicast mode. The channel scan function can help us to select the appropriate wireless channel. And the multicast mode means that our transmitter can simultaneously transmit the video signal to multiple receivers. Let's get right into the unboxing introduction of Pro-Z. Now you can see all the items already spread out on the desktop. One user manual. One warranty card. Two mushroom antennas. One magic arm. One DTAP to two pin limo cable. Two SDI cables. One transmitter. One receiver. One hard case. And seven antennas. Now, let's go ahead with the interfaces and functions of transmitter. As you can see, it's a design of sandwich V-mounted structure. On the front is the V-mount battery slot. For inputs on the transmitter, there is an SDI in. And an SDI loop out. You can connect the video resource by the SDI input port, and then loop out to your monitor to watch. Here is HDMI in. These three buttons are the functional buttons. The up button is used to increase the channel, then the down button is for decreasing. The menu button is used to change any settings. The great thing is that the important functions would be displayed on the OLED screen, for example, the signal info, current channel, fan status. Turn it around and here is a 2-pin limo power port. This button release allows you to more easily lock and remove the V-mount battery. Then you can see a USB-C port here. It's for updating the firmware. For mounting options on the bottom, there are three quarter inch holes. Now we'll attach the V-mount battery to the transmitter. The power button emits a blue light which means our transmitter is working now. And then if you turn it around here, you'll see that the OLED screen is lighted on too. Without further ado, let's take a look at the OLED screen. There are some icons displaying. We'll see at the top here, it displays the current battery voltage, the status of the fan, the strength of the video signal. At the middle, NO video indicates that no video signal is detected. In this situation, you need to check whether the camera successfully builds the connection with the transmitter, or the video resolution is not corresponding with each other. At the last, CH3 indicates that you are now using channel 3. Short press the up button to increase, then the down button to decrease. Then short press the menu button to get the channel you want. Long press the menu button, you can easily change the settings. Such as the fan status, languages, firmware version check. The awesome thing is that for achieving a clear recording, our transmitter fan mode can be set to auto or manual. Then we'll go down to the languages. You can select Chinese or English. Now, we come to the last firmware version check. If you don't want to change any settings, then select the exit to return. It's really great. Now that we've covered transmitter, we'd like to take a look at the receiver. There are up, down, and menu buttons on the front. You can set up such functions in the menu setting, such as channel switch, channel scan, fan status switch. For the side, there is an HDMI in, dual SDI out, and then also a battery release button, used to lock and remove the V-mount battery. For the back, there is a V-mount battery slot, so that it can run for a long time. This USB port is used to update the firmware. A power button and a 2-pin limo port. For mounting options on the bottom, there are two a quarter inch holes, and then a 3 8 screw hole. For the top, there are five antenna connectors. Okay, that's it. Now, let's go through the content on the OLED screen. We'll see at the top here, it displays the current battery voltage. The status of the fan, the strength of the video signal, 1080p 50Hz indicates the current video resolution. 
CH5 means the wireless signal is on the channel 5. Now if we want to change to other channel, just short press the up button to increase, then the down button to decrease. Finally, short press the menu button to confirm your final selection. So how do we get to the functional settings interface? Long press the menu button, you'll get it. For settings, we have the channel scan, video color, languages and firmware version check. Short press the menu button to enable the channel scan, then we'll select start. Once started, it scans and evaluates the available channels to get the best possible results. These checked channels can get away from the interference and establish a stronger connection. Once all done, you can exit, then switch the current channel to one of the checked channels. For video color, you can select auto mode, YUV444, YUV422, or RGB depending on the connected device. The important point of video color is the HDMI signal output setting. Next, we'll reach for the languages and enable it, then select Chinese or English, exit, then go down to the firmware version, we'll see the current version on our device. Once all settings is set, we'll select exit. There we go. Let's get into the process of connecting the system to third-party devices. We'll connect our transmitter to the camera. Then connect our receiver to the monitor or live switcher. We'll use a Panasonic camera and an Automos monitor to shoot this time. First off, we'll mount our transmitter on top of the camera through the quarter-inch screw hole. Then attach it with the V-mount battery. Once our transmitter is mounted, we'll connect it to camera with an SDI cable. Then power on. Next, connect the receiver to the monitor with an SDI cable. You can see the monitor is displaying the images from the camera. By the way, it's not only supported to connect our receiver to the monitor, but also the switch console or webcasting server. So now, we have finished all the introduction. Please note that, 1, our transmitter and receiver must use the same channel, so that they can link to each other normally. 2, our transmitter and receiver must be separated from each other at least 1 meter apart. We are very excited about this Pro-Z system. Looking forward to seeing it could let you focus on creating great content. Happy shooting!